Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield, uh, Weathersfield High School student representative Ms. Eden Fritz Aguirre? All present. Thank you. So can the board please stand and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And we'll move on. Mr. Emmett, we have staff recognition tonight? Yeah, we, we do. Just a, a brief uh, video clip that I'd like to show uh, to the public with regard to the district's efforts uh, to support the Hunger Action Team for the month of November. Our uh, students and our staff across the district um, did a wonderful job of uh, conducting multiple food drives. And uh, the little video clip that you're about to see produced by our students um, kind of chronicles the uh, efforts of the district. And the school system um, signed up as a dazzling dozen through the Hunger Action Team, and um, this was a great endeavor. So people can have a nice meal for Thanksgiving. The bus was stuffed. Yeah, I would say it was, huh? I think it's important to donate around this time of year because not many people get the get the food and get the food that we all do. And we're, I think we're very lucky to get the food that we all get for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And I think it's important because everybody should have the same happiness that we all have. Again, many thanks to the staff and students of the Weatherfield Public Schools for uh, making this month a very productive one. It certainly uh, benefited our uh, friends and neighbors here in Weathersfield and our, our food bank. So thank you very much. Great. Okay, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our regular Board of Ed meeting on November 13th, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, over here, one abstention. Abstain. Okay, those minutes are approved. Okay, and did you get, Ellen, did you see that Eden is here? Yes. Okay, welcome. All right, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address, and may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay, Mr. Emmett? 
You have communications to share? I do. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. I uh, certainly wanted to provide you with an update on the uh, despicable incident uh, that occurred to one of our Silas Dean Middle School students while waiting at the bus stop yesterday morning. The most important item to report is that the student is, in fact, okay. In fact, he returned to school yesterday morning, uh, and at this time, the police investigation is very active. We are certainly hopeful that those responsible are caught and held accountable. This incident does cause us pause that as a community, we need to stay vigilant. Let's keep an eye out at the bus stops across town. For those parents who leave early to work and take off before their kids get on the bus, have a neighbor in the neighborhood look out for the students. Let's look out for each other. In addition to stepped up patrols by the Weathersfield Police Department, we alerted autumn transportation yesterday and asked the bus drivers radio in any suspicious behavior that they observe on their routes and relay any student concerns to dispatch for immediate follow-up. In other news, the Career Advisory Academy met last night and to say that this group is moving uh, is an understatement. Uh, the group continues to build upon the Lunch and Learn theme. We have several more Lunch and Learns planned for the year as it moves on. Uh, we are fortunate to have a great connection with the travelers. Um, they've offered opportunities for our students to explore career pathways. At the December board meeting, you'll uh, meet a group of students that went to the Travelers for Actuarial Day, uh, along with our career coordinator, Mr. Mark Danaher. Uh, very, very happy to report that uh, the district was awarded an IBM community grant. Uh, the district has received a grant of $500. This grant will go to support the technology programs at Weathersfield High School. Many thanks to Weathersfield parent and member of the Career Advisory Board, Chris Zach, for his connecting us with IBM. Mr. Danaher uh, reported that the fundraiser at Puerto Vallarta was very well attended. As of meeting time last night, he'd not yet received the total from this res uh, restaurant fundraiser. Proceeds from the fundraiser will go toward transportation and program expenses for job shadow, internship, and career exploration opportunities for our students. Last Wednesday, I met with Craig Dresick from Goodwin College regarding potential opportunities for our students in the manufacturing field. Craig will be returning for a visit to Weathersfield High School to tour our facility and connect with our staff. This ties directly back to the work of the Career Advisory Board, which is working with Goodwin now to get the mobile manufacturing lab out to the high school in December. Councilman Lesser is also working on a connection with UBS Financial Services that includes bringing in a student, uh, an alum from Weathersfield High School who works with the firm. I'd like to uh, report out uh, that next week, December 6th from 7 to 8 p.m., is the annual Family Night of Code mm -hmm. at Weathersfield High School. All families are invited. Uh, the coding activities are aimed at grades 4 to 8, as well as for parents. But parents are welcome to bring younger children, too. Many thanks to WHS science teacher Joe Kess and his WHS student coders who make this event possible. We have holidays on Main coming up, uh, happening next Thursday, December 6th, from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock in Old Weathersfield. Uh, I'd certainly recommend getting there at 545 so you can catch a performance by the Weathersfield High Coral Airs. And it is winter concert season. Uh, please check your green calendars for specific schedules or visit the district website for times and dates. The winter concerts actually start next Tuesday and Wednesday with concerts at Silas Dean. Uh, next week, I will be headed to Capital Community College uh, to meet with folks from the Liberty Bank Foundation with Kim Bobbin. As you know, Kim is an avid uh, grant finder, and uh, she was awarded a $5,000 grant from the Liberty Bank Foundation to help Weathersfield develop a plan for an intergenerational community-based family resource center. Just an update on the Highcrest portables. We're awaiting an additional cost estimate for design work for the replacement of those portables. Uh, so we're waiting to hear back from the architect on that. We did get one uh, bid. Sally Katz thought that the bid was somewhat high, so she wanted to get an extra bid. So I'll report back as soon as I get that information. At this time, with regard to phase two uh, planning, I'm awaiting a cost breakdown from Colliers and Malone McBroom for the phase two work. I'll forward that information to you as soon as I receive it. As for shared services, I'm uh, happy to report, and knocking on wood, that we do have a candidate for the custodial maintenance supervisor position. Uh, at this time, as this is a town position, all pre-employment tasks are being completed uh, on the town side. The anticipated start date uh, for this individual will be late December. Um, certainly very happy to have been part of the process and part of the hiring committee, uh, and I look forward to getting this position filled. 
And then finally, last but not least, uh, we held interviews today for the Silas Dean principal position. Uh, we had two of our board members that participated. It was a long process today. Mm -hmm. We saw five candidates, and uh, I do understand that we have a couple of candidates that will move forward uh, to my level, level two, uh, and that is tentatively scheduled for next Monday, December 3rd. And with that, it's communications. Great. Any questions for Michael? Um, I just have one. Mike, what's the next um, advisory meeting? Uh, I think we're skipping December. We are skipping right. December, off the top of my head, January 28th. Okay. 20, the 25th or 28th. Okay. We'll get that out in your green yes. calendar. Okay, that's all I want. Okay, thanks. I'll look at it then. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, we'll move on to um, our action items. We have a few action items tonight. Um, Kelly, would you please read motion 6A for us? Um, recommended that Wethersfield Board of Education approve the international school field trip request for Ireland during the April recess of 2020. April 9th, 2020. Okay. Is, good. Is there any discussion? We have someone who can discuss this with us? We do. We have Mr. Nicholas. And can a we world, A to world, world traveler. <laughs> Was he, in the, he was in the play. Good yes, yes, he was everyone. in the play. Yes, he was excellent. So uh, the nice thing about that weekly vacation that we have is there's an extra bonus day involved because mm -hmm. it falls on just before Good Friday. So I have added on three extra days or two extra days to the trip so we can also include Northern Ireland as well. So, wow. But I'll be happy to take any questions. Um, this will be the second time taking kids to Ireland did the exact same itinerary five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the World Cup was going on and we were there during the summer. It was phenomenal. But this time, I think I want to take them in April. It'll be a little cooler, but uh, it's, it's beautiful in Ireland all year round. So looking forward to it, hopefully. Any questions on it? John? How many students do you anticipate will be attending? Uh, I think I've opened the window right now for 24, but we can always go much more than that. And the uh, parents are aboard with the payments and getting it on, and chaperoning is all set. Uh, well, well, the chaperoning will depend on how many students that sign up. We take uh, one chaperone for every six students that come along. Um, so that, but I've definitely got people lined up. Shockingly, right? It's hard to believe. <laughs> um, but yes, um, parents have shown interest. You know, I've put it out as a you know, possible trip, a tentative trip. So it's you know mm -hmm. without having it approved yet, it's hard to really advertise and get the word out as much as you want to, but we're sort of waiting for the approval, and now it's easier to really advertise. And I just didn't know if Kelly had signed up to be a chaperone. I, I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I just got back, and I oh, went to a couple yeah. of places on the list, so I'm excited for your students. Lovely, nice, excellent. In what, just to, to um, add to your comment, Mr. Cassio, one of the reasons that we go for approval so far in advance is it allows the families the opportunity to save. Obviously, there's a cost involved here. So for planning purposes, we like to get these done early and well in advance uh, to give families time to prepare. Right, and it lowers the monthly payments. So, the, you know, obviously, same amount of money over a longer period of time, mm -hmm. which makes it easier for the kids. Sometimes the kids pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. So... I've had a few, many students over the years who've paid for their own trips, and uh, definitely makes it easier for them that way as well. Mm -hmm. so. nice. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no further discussion, we'll vote on this. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Well, we're going to Ireland. Motion right. 6A is approved. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nicholas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Chris, would you read motion 6B for us? Yes, Madam Chair, good evening. Okay, moved uh, that the we Weathersfield Board of Education approve the International School Field Trip request for Costa Rica during the April recess of the year 2020 from April 13th to the 21st of that year. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? I don't know if uh, Mr. Sand is here. Anyone want to Costa Rica? Come on up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
Hi, good evening. Um, this is uh, the fifth time uh, taking the trip to Costa Rica with kids. Um, it's the exact same trip. We do the exact same stuff. Um, and it just is a, a trip that I take because it provides, I think, the best experiences at the lowest cost for the kids. It's uh, the lowest cost trip that EF offers, and the things that they do there are just simply phenomenal. Um, and while there's other things I'd like to go see and do, uh, the kids just won't let me out of taking this trip. Um, they hassle me, you know, siblings, and over and over again. So we'll keep going back, uh, and I think this group has seen enough of the videos to, you know, all want to go and, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, it, it's have it down pat. I always have the same tour director. I know where we're going, what we're doing, and, and uh, it, it actually makes it a little bit less stressful because uh, we I know the ropes, so to speak. And about how many students usually go on this with you? It's a 30 is a good number. Yeah, yeah I try for 30. It uh, gives us enough space to take enough chaperones, and uh, when you get to 30, you have your own bus. Um, the first couple trips I went, we were combined with some other schools uh, because we didn't have 30, so they put two groups together, which is always fine. Um, but it's just easier from a logistics standpoint to say, it's our bus, I know what we're doing, I know where we're going, and, and that's what we're going to do. Great. So. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, let's, uh, let's vote. All in favor of our trip to Costa Rica? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Thank you, John. Thank you. Diane, would you read motion 6C for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the international school field trip for Australia and New Zealand during the summer recess of 2019, June 27th through July 8th. Um, is there a second? Second. second. OK. Any discussion on this? Oh, he's back. <laughs> yeah. He's My not. wife is thrilled that I'm gone all the time. Oh, well, I kind of think she is, actually, but that's okay. We're, uh, we're good. Uh, this trip flies into New Zealand. Uh, it's got a couple days in New Zealand, uh, both in Auckland, which is at the northern point of the northernmost island, um, and down a couple hours to a, t a, a town called Rotorua, which is uh, it's a geothermal area, kind of like Yellowstone. Um, so there's a lot of that nat natural stuff going on there. Um, a lot of different activities in the area. I spent uh, five days in Rotorua this summer with my own family. Uh, absolutely loved it. It's, it's an amazing, amazing country. Uh, if you've seen any of the Lord of the Rings stuff or The Hobbit, it all took place there. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, from there, we fly over to uh, Sydney. We spend a bunch of days in Sydney. Um, and I spent a couple days in Sydney this, this summer as well on the same trip. And uh, it became my new favorite city in the world. Um, it, it's just incredible, an incredible place. Um, after a couple of days in Sydney, we'll fly up to Cairns, which is in uh, the northern part of Queensland, and um, we get a chance to go out and, and snorkel at the Great Barrier Reef, um, which to me is kind of a once in a lifetime as, it, as it's dying off and, and uh, becoming more difficult to, to, for it to survive, kind of like, let's go now while we can. Um, this was, again, not my idea. Uh, I got bombarded with students, um, like, you have to take us, you have to take us, and um, so that's kind of where, where it came from. Um, I was, like I said, lucky enough to go over the summer with my own family, and uh, the kids thought I was scouting it out. I wasn't, but it kind of worked out that way. Um, the other neat, about trip, neat thing about this trip is uh, one of the chaperones who regularly chaperones uh, my trips with me is a former student, uh, Shannon Penny, and for the last five years she's lived in Sydney. So we've got all the inside scoop. We'll know all the cheap places to get some food and, yeah, uh, great, and the yeah. easy way to get around. So. Um, but it's, uh, it, it should be a trip of a lifetime, and um, I, I really look at it like that. I think a lot of kids will have the opportunity to go to Europe. I think a lot of kids will have the opportunity to go to Costa Rica or Belize or somewhere like that. But to go to Australia and New Zealand, it, it really is, a, I think, a once-in-a-lifetime, and I'm, I'm really happy to, if we can give the kids that opportunity. That's great. Any questions? Diane? Oh, John? Go ahead. is that? Which one? <laughs> Um, so they, they haven't booked the flight yet. hours, and that's twice as far. That's an awful long trip. So we're flying into New Zealand, and you can fly there from L.A., Houston, um, San Francisco, uh, or Honolulu. So we'll go from one of those places. This summer we flew from L.A. From L.A. over, it's about, 12 hour, about a 12-hour flight. Um, and ironically, and I, and I I say this with all sincerity, it wasn't a bad flight at all. I, I don't sleep on planes, I, I really don't, um, but when we got on the flight about 9.30 in LA, 
and we left. I, I watched a movie, uh, then we ate, and I watched another movie, and we were flying to Sydney when we went, so it was a little bit longer of a flight. Um, and then you've been up so long. At that point, I was up almost 24 hours. I actually did conk out, um, which is fine for me. Now, my teenage daughter, uh, we weren't, I don't think the wheels were up, and she was already asleep. And then she woke up when the wheels landed. She slept oh. for the whole 12 hours. I, I don't know how kids do that, but they did. Good way to travel. Um, you know. <laughs> so the flight isn't that bad. It's, it's uh, obviously five, six hours out to L.A. from here if we go from L.A. Um, and then about 12 hours from there. Coming home, not so good. <laughs> Didn't sleep. We're coming the wrong way. For about two weeks, we woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning every night going, where am I? But um, going there is not bad at all. And, and that's better because, you know, we, we landed in Sydney at 7.30 and hit the ground running. We had an opera, tour, opera house tour at 9 o'clock, and we spent the whole day and felt great. It wasn't, wasn't bad going over. Coming back, we're a little tired, though. Okay. Diane, you had something? I had a bunch of, of your former students at my house this weekend and okay. told them about this, and they were very uh, upset. I've <laughs> heard that from them, too. Yes. They never did it. Apparently, I went into their rights as a former student. I don't know. Yeah. One of them is going to be in um, Australia for that semester. Oh, is that right? Leah Kekham is going to Australia really? for her um, spring semester. Interesting. Okay. And Paige Landers just came back from New Zealand okay. this past semester. Interesting. That'll be great. Okay. Any other discussion? A oh, great trip. Okay. All in favor of our trip to New Zealand and Australia? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. 6C passes. All right. Let's move on to 6D. Ginger, would you read that for us? Certainly. Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve adoption of transportation and alternative energy curriculum. Now, after all that traveling, this doesn't sound as exciting. Transportation <laughs> is important to these students. It yeah. is important. Um, second. Second, thank you. Any discussion? John, you want to talk to? We talked about it, student program and services. I am marginally competent to have an intelligent conversation about the courses, but I did make a very good note for myself. Um, Mr. Moore was telling us this is one of the most highly subscribed classes we have at the yeah. high school. There's a waiting line to get in it. And so this is just a, a really good thing. Um, <clears throat> this was uh, unanimously approved by the committee. Great. Any John, other discussion? Explain, explain what they mean by transportation, part of this curriculum. I can read the course description for oh, you because I, quick, I'm marginally yeah, competent. Students will explore the many areas of transportation, air, sea, land, and space, and the latest alternative energy technologies, including electric and solar-powered vehicles. Additionally, gain hands-on experience in small injury repair and maintenance. Oh, okay. That was Recommended like, for was careers in transportation, yeah. STEM, automotive, civil yeah. engineering, mechanical engineering, mechanic technology yeah, teaching. Yeah, I remember now. Thank you for, I was there. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I'd just like to make a quick comment. Uh, Mr. Sikora came and spoke to this at the Student Programs and Services, and like John said, it's the most highly subscribed, one of the more highly subscribed classes that they offer at the high school, but um, he was very passionate about it, uh, and it really ties in well to kind of what this board is kind of trying to do in terms of exposure to different avenues beyond college and things like that, uh, and it went kind of right into our wheelhouse. So. Um, I, uh, I commend uh, Mr. Score and Mr. Moore for, uh, for putting this out here. I agree. Anyone else? Okay, let's put a vote here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Good. Motion 6D passes. And motion 6E. John, would you read that for us? Will the Weathersfield Board of Education approve adoption of environmental science A curriculum? Second. Okay, second. Okay, any discussion? That also was at Student Program and Services, and it was in your packet. Okay? Yep. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6E passes. Nice curriculum changes. Very nice. Yeah. Very updated. Mm -hmm. All right, tonight we have a presentation of our quarterly report on the Weathersfield Public School strategic plan. Now you have copies there. And we have a slide presentation, and John, Michael, and I will go up to the podium.
Why don't you share with Kevin and I'll share with Kelly. Oh, she didn't want to leave me. Yeah. Um, she didn't want to show the reaction. So I took my name. Good evening again, everyone. Um, board members, you have some copies um, with you. Deb is making additional copies over at the library and texts me and says that the copy machine jammed at the library. So that's where she is. We have uh, several pages or several copies that did not have goal three. So we want to make sure that you get that. Uh, and then for members of the public who are here, um, we'll have copies for you as well. So we're, we're here this evening um, to reiterate the fact that our strategic plan is not something that sits on the shelf. It is a living and breathing document that we are monitoring, we are poking at, we are hitting full steam ahead. Um, one of the tenets of our work with the strategic plan is the process of plan management. So with the management, we look to ensure ongoing review, development, and measurement of the plan's goals, strategies, and actions. It's important, and what you'll find tonight is we're not reporting on all actions because, quite frankly, you can't do everything all at once. We really need to be strategic about this. And as you can recall from our work at the board retreat, we really were talking a lot about prioritization of this plan. It's a big plan. It's an, uh, an ambitious plan, but one that we need to really prioritize. The idea here also is to communicate the goals and ongoing proce uh, progress with the district and the community stakeholders and provide opportunities for discussion. And one of the things you get from our principals as well as your superintendent on a weekly basis is updates. And those updates always align and go back to that strategic plan. It's part of the fabric of what we do. And again, the thing, and you'll see this when I talk uh, at the conclusion of this and we talk about the next steps, it's really getting it down to the classroom level, making sure that it's not only at the 30,000 foot view, but it's, it's in classrooms. It's part of the work that we do, and it has feedback from all stakeholders, from the community um, to our principals, uh, our teachers, our paraprofessionals, our custodians, the students as well, the entire community. So Mrs. Granado and Mr. Cassio, who are part of the committee that, that oversees the management of this plan, are going to talk about each goal and talk about some of the progress that we've made in this first quarter. Thank you, Michael. Well, in front of you, you have goal one is student achievement. Uh, we can sit here and talk to you about that, but prior to what Michael was saying, uh, I want to reiterate the fact that this plan is something that is going to be moving forward. It's not something that's going to sit on a shelf. We felt very passionate about the fact that this is unique in the sense for Weathersfield. We've had plans, but I think at this point we've never been so specific. Uh, but the other thing is that the plan is a, w a work in progress. It's something that can be changed, it can be assessed, and we can move forward. If the things aren't working, we look at it and say, okay, why isn't this working? Why hasn't everyone accepted it? So we're not rigid, but yet we're flexible in the sense that the things that need to change as we move forward, we're very, uh, going to be very successful and aware of that. So with student achievement is goal one, and Bobby will go over of what we're in progress. Okay, can we go one more? Mm -hmm. um, what we thought we'd do is tell you the progress we made on these particular goals. And in goal one on student achievement, the progress we've made, and you also have to remember, we're going to 2024 with this, and we had to say this to ourselves in committee because we wanted all the goals, we wanted the goal done. But we've made tremendous progress already. If you look, we've connected to the Travelers Insurance Company for student programs. We've received IBM community grants for technology, potential collaboration with Goodwin College around manufacturing, fundraising efforts to support learning opportunities. Our career advisory committee is in place and vigorously working. Our lunch and learn opportunities for students and we're exploring an online program that supports career pathways down to the elementary level. Also, 
Courageous Conversations, which is a professional development focused on culturally responsive teaching. And November PD offerings included social emotional learning, ABA training, instructional and behavior strategies to grow independent students. We're supporting successful inclusion, Google platform technology to support student learning, TEL assessment for English language learners, and the NGSS science standards. Go ahead, John. Goal two, civic and family engagement. The strategy at this point is to make Wethersfield more of a community than it already is. Uh, provide schools with uh, students to have the opportunities to see what they can do in the, in the community and learn what the community can learn from the students. One example that we just saw earlier was what DECA did with Suffa Bus for the community. So those are just some small little items that are happening within the school. Um, but th the fact that we are telling our story, that's the other thing that we're le learning to do. Uh, we have so much good going in, in the buildings, in the schools, and within the community. We need to just explain it and tell it a little bit more. And I think with the fact that we have a student rep um, within our board for over the past few years is a prime example of where we're going with this plan. And Bobby will talk to you next. Okay, again, we'll get to the progress that we've made on um, goal two. We've district supported the HAT, which is the Hunger Action Team for the month of November with a district-wide food share, and I'm so proud that we were one of the dazzling dozen. Shared services continues to grow with maintenance of the IT partnership and the development of the custodial maintenance department shift of staff to the town side, which will wrap up in January. Support of the keen after school programming, high participation in the elementary level. And as I always say, we thank Judy Keene all the time. She is Wethersfield's fairy godmother. Sharing of district enrollment study with WEC to be presented in January, and WEC is our Wethersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Um, a school system is only as good as its foundation, and our foundation is our early childhood. And district participation in quarterly Chamber of Commerce meetings. As we move into goal three, the management, operations, and finance, the strategies continually evaluate ongoing expenses relative to their ability to promote student achievement, ensure a safe and supportive physical environment that promotes effective teaching and learning. With that, we are right now in going into phase two of our overall composite of what our buildings are doing for our school system. So you'll see as we move in the progress of this particular goal, they all work together. Um, and you know, it's exciting, and the ability to move is, I think, one of the things that are making us a great board and a great community in the school district. Right, so some of the progress here, we have the Wethersfield Education Foundation, which um, another group of fabulous people, along with the Career Advisory Council, um, it supported the CTE program at the Wethersfield High School, including automotive donations to the auto shop and a donation for tools. And of course, we're looking for the community to support the WEF. Phase one of the facilities audit is complete for the elementary schools, and what a Herculean effort that was, just phase one. Cost estimates of repairs to current buildings have been complete. A 10-year enrollment study is complete. Trends show remarkable stability for the next 10 years. And phase two will map out options for the district's elementary schools. So in terms of next steps, um, clearly we know that we'll be providing the next update in February of 2019. Um, I can't stress enough that prioritization among stakeholders is one of the key pieces that we have to focus on first. Continue to implement uh, this plan with an emphasis on connection down to the classroom level so that I know that teachers know it. 
I know that teachers don't look at this as an extra burden, but just part of the fabric of what we do in the Wethersfield Public Schools. And certainly the other piece is increasing the visibility of the plan. And you'll see the plan more frequently in, in classrooms. You'll see it in schools, uh, even at the Stillman Building when you come for meetings. You need to see that plan as a living, breathing document. Um, we certainly have some areas that we have work uh, to do. And certainly I think we're going to have to assess. It was mentioned earlier, Bobby and John talked about the idea of, of assessing it. There may be pieces that we finish and we will put aside. There may be new things, new initiatives that come forward that we certainly need to tackle. Um, but the idea is we have a clear roadmap of where we're going. Um, and it's interesting, and I've spent more time working with the town in the past like four or five months than I did in the previous six years. And we were talking about the strategic plan and with Sally Katz working with us um, on our central office team meetings and our administrative team meetings, I think she's getting a first-hand view of the work we do and kind of the, the, the high-level work we do. And um, there's talk among the staff here on the town side of, you know, they need some strategic planning. I think it's a good tool. It's a good roadmap of how we're moving and how we're going, and it's something that's clear and will provide measurable results. So with that, we'd be happy to take any questions that you have. One of the things that we did... Uh, when we started working on this, one of the things that we've all seen through the years is that we have the town, we have the board, and we have the library. What we wanted to do on the board side is what Mike has just announced or just indicated, that it's not the town, it's not the library, it's not the fire, it's not the, the board, it's Weathersfield. So we all have to work together to show what we're looking for to the next steps. Because if we all work in isolation, it's not going to happen the way we, it should. So this is opening eyes and doors for a lot of different things, as Mike said, in the last five years. You know, it, he's been more engaged with conversation. And I think that's the key behind anything. Communication, good conversation, what works and what doesn't work. So it's, it's a plan in action, and we're happy. You know, John, I think you, you just kind of uh, alluded to a question I had regarding what works and what doesn't work. There's a ton of stuff we've been doing the past year beyond and beyond getting this plan together. And we've already started a lot of programs that are up and running and some more that are following behind. You know, and there's a lot of um, measures here, a lot of measurements, a lot of things that we can decide what works, what doesn't work. But how, do we tr how are we going to trigger that in terms of, all right, this program is not – it's either not connecting to the kids or it's not highly subscribed, it's got bad, poor feedback. I mean, how are we going to gather that data? That, uh, that's a great question. I'd be happy to take that. I mean, uh, the perfect example I can give you is the issue with Lunch and Learns. Uh, you know, the Lunch and Learns, when they first started, we had a little trouble getting them off the ground. Um, there was the issue of how do we um, get it out to the kids? How do we make sure that we're aligning the the people that are coming in with the kids' interests? So one of the things that Mark Danaher did was he developed a survey and he surveyed all the kids. And he got back, I think, north of 900 surveys out of a school of just about 1,200 kids. So that's a pretty good return rate. So we were able to tailor the the lunch and learns to the kids' interests. And I think that's what has to happen. We have to continuously assess the, the what's working and the what's not. I mentioned here in, in the presentation, it was talked about with the, um, the potential online program. Um, that's a program that I discovered when I went to my conference uh, in Florida for the District uh, Administrators Leadership Institute. Um, we're not just going to come in and buy it. Um, we're going to assess it. So Sally's going to be doing a webinar with the company. We're going to assess it and look at it and see if it meets our needs. How quickly do we move it down? Because, again, we've talked a lot about the high school. Career exploration opportunities really can start in kindergarten. There's no reason that they can't. So we have to assess if this type of program is really going to work. The other key piece is we, we don't want to spend money where it's not going to be giving us a return. That's the bottom line. So a lot of assessment, and John had mentioned the process of communication. It's, it's really about the communication. It's not a top-down approach. It's a leader-leader model. So if, you know, Mark is saying that he needs something, Tom is saying he needs something. You know, I'll give you an example also with the IBM grant. Um, I've already got teachers and administrators saying exactly where that money can support student learning. 
So it's not just, hey, we got the money, it's going to go here, but it's that shared, shared leadership and that shared vision. Yeah. And I just want to say the comment again, the strategic plan goes to 2024. As we move along and we find things that aren't working, they're gone. I mean, these just are overbearing or they're too much for the curriculum or they're just obsolete for what our students need. One of the reasons this big shift is going on is we are really heading into a 21st century curriculum education. We're looking for that 21st century student. And as you hear about these new job opportunities for students, so often the businesses train them. So how do we get our students ready for that? Um, so all of this is in our strategic plan, is how do we get students ready for the 21st century careers that they're going to be vying for. Um, and so can we change as we go to 2024? We sure can, and we should. Um, and we should constantly be um, emailing each other about new ideas, which we do, and I think that's one of the strengths of this board is our communication skills, um, because it is changing so rapidly for our students. I think the, um, Bobby is absolutely right in this fact that we need to assess constantly and what is not working needs to go. And just what we saw tonight, the approval of the transportation, and I couldn't, I was at student services, but I couldn't recall what transportation was, and, and kids looking at the inside of the cars and, and the environment that we all have to live in, all that's so updated. and, and I know something probably had to be cut down to get that in. So that's, a, I think that's so positive to constantly, it can't be just once in a while because constantly we have to mm -hmm. look with the help of Tom Moore on who, how many are enrolling in this class or what's the waiting list to get in this class to um, maybe we need another section. Maybe we don't need that particular class. It's only got three kids in it because, you know, so it, it's a positive move in my opinion tremendously positive move and I think you and John, Bobby and John and Mike should, you know, taking that step that way is a big step forward for this whole community and I thank you for taking that chore on. Well, we're okay. happy to do it. <laughs> we'll be back in February, right? We'll be back yeah. in February of 2019. Thank you. Okay, and just to end that, and Michael had said it in his presentation, we are doing quarterly reports on the strategic plan, so you'll be hearing again from us in February. Um, but let's move on in our meeting here. So we have our um, Board of Ed meetings that were held, and Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative um, has its focus that all Weathersfield children birth to eight are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. WEC met on Monday, November 19th at the library. And Lisa, Lisa Puglielli, WEC's accountability coordinator, spoke of the constant contact newsletter and the use of the WEC website. Please check out their website. It is loaded with information. Lisa is in the process of requesting updated data on BMI, preschool attendance, and third grade reading scores. And a survey has been sent to local preschool directors to gather information such as types of preschools, hours, cost of programs offered, list and email addresses of teachers, and information on how and when to register for preschool. Again, all this information will be on their website. Kim Bobbin, our Family and Early Childhood Coordinator, reported that WEC unfortunately did not receive the PEP grant from the Parent Trust Fund. And as of right now, the PEP program will not run in January. 
but the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving did come through with a grant so that the PEP graduates, those who have graduated, can use their power of networking and learn how to get onto local boards and commissions. So WEC also received from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving funds for their two gen work and that budget is currently being prepared. And the next WEC meeting will be in January of 2019. And we also had our Student Program and Services Committee. John, will you speak to that? Uh, sure, in addition to the two curriculum changes we approved tonight, we also had a lengthy conversation about our SAT prep programs, um, making sure kids are aware of the need for it, the importance of it, and prepared for it. Um, both practicing as well as working on how they answer questions and the strategies of things so that they take that very, very seriously because it is an important test. We also had a lengthy discussion about career awareness. We heard some more about the, the various lunch and learns. And my note tells me the next one up is a chef from Trumbull Kitchen, which I might have to go to <laughs> because I would love to do that. Um, a wonderful program. Um, it was really a very good meeting. We were there for quite a while. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for John? Elaine? I, ha I attended the meeting, although I'm not on the committee. I, student services is an interest of mine. So um, I didn't ask that night, but I think you did, John Morris. I'm not sure. I have my notes. Um, this is all wonderful um, additions to each classroom, embedded strategies for how to take SATs. I'm just wondering if we are going to evaluate. I think you asked that before the actual SAT time you know and I don't know Diane would be able to tell me what day, is that in April or is that in May the SATs or how are we going to know what what we put in place is working before the actual you know, I think you asked that is you know I did and I don't I, remember what I, I got did, and no they didn't answer you because I have it in my notes they, they went on to something else and I said why didn't John, John didn't get an answer on how are we gonna it's all wonderful embedded in and everything but I just want to say that for my sake is it how are we going to know it's working before the test, the real SAT test? Is, uh, is there somebody assessing, Mike, as we go along? Or would you be? What, uh, what I would suggest is I didn't attend that meeting. Sally, okay, yeah, that's uh, right. Sally ran that meeting. Okay. My suggestion would be I understand you're going over to Web tomorrow. Yes. We'll be at Web tomorrow doing walkthroughs. Oh. So let me have you connect with okay. Sally on okay. the answer, and then I can get the rest of the board the uh, answer uh, in the Friday update. That'd be great. From, from what I recall from the meeting, I think what the issue was is that when we take a lot of these practice exams, they do not break out the scores from each section. You get kind of, they compartmentalize them. Okay. And that is, has to do with the test that's taken. And really, there's no way for them to kind of parse out okay. you're having trouble in this area. Oh, so right. they just have to more generalize Oh, in each all right, section. Kevin, thank you. Maybe I missed mm -hmm. that. I just wasn't sure. I thought, you yeah. know, we've got a great program out there. Yeah. I wasn't sure how, yeah. thank you, Kevin. Yeah. That's and, fine. and part of the SAT, um, prep is the strategy of taking a test yes. as we all know the more you take it the better you yes. get at it um, and not that we're going to have these kids sitting there in math class constantly doing SAT prep but the fact that they're um, accustomed to the questions and to the rigor of yes. it helps a lot it does tremendously great thanks Kevin of course. okay and then we just left Finance and Information Management Committee, Kevin. Yes, thank you. We had a, uh, a brief meeting prior to the board meeting tonight. Uh, Mr. Kazaka was kind enough to kind of walk us through our 2018-2019 projections. Um, he uh, identified, first of all, some uh, some savings. We have uh, $117,000 worth of savings. That's a result of the pairs and um, secretaries, the units. Uh, they're still in the contract negotiations. Um, and a potential savings as well of $150,000, and that's due to the, uh, the success of the ABA program. That is some special education students returning from out of district being taught in district in Weathersfield, which is, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's great to know. And beyond that, uh, we have some risk and exposure of $150,000 regarding busing um, and enrollment for the Discovery Academy. Um, and as well as some additional electricity costs of $45,000. And right now, our f we are forecasted for 2018-2019 of $36,000 under budget. So pretty, pretty much on the nose at this point. Any questions for Kevin? Okay. 
So we'll move on to meetings scheduled. We have a community and public relations committee on November 28th at 6 o'clock. A special board of ed meeting on um, November 29th at 6 o'clock. CREC Council on December 5th at 11.30, and Policy and Planning Committee on December 10th at 6 o'clock. Okay, is there any unfinished business? Okay. All right, anyone in the public wishing to make a comment, please come on up, state your name and address, and may I remind you, public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, are there any board comments? Ginger? I would just like to give a couple of shout outs to some groups at the high school. Um, I went to the Laramie Project um, last weekend and I have to say it's certainly the most courageous thing I've ever seen happen in a Weathersfield public school. Um, it's not an easy subject and the kids handled it incredibly well. I agree. And, uh, I can't say I enjoyed it. It's not the type of thing you enjoy, but um, it was very powerful and it was very well done. Um, on a happier note, uh, girls swimming, and we all know that swimming is the best sport on earth. Um, <laughs> She's not biased. Came, yeah, not biased at all. Uh, came in ninth at the state open, which is so amazing. And it's even more amazing when you think it, that swimming is one of the sports, one of the few sports, that you participate um, in your event and you can't hear your coach. Your head is under the water. So you have to be incredibly well trained. So a big shout out to the Weathersfield Girls Swimming. Great. That's it. Thank you, thank you. Diane? Um, today in the paper there was um, an article about the West, ha West Hartford um, school system and a bully, bullying reporting app. I don't know if I anyone saw, saw that. it. Yep. Um, and it also listed a number of other schools in, in this area that are using it. So um, I was planning on scheduling a wellness committee meeting in early January, but I think we should take a look at that. Yeah. The article was mm -hmm. said it was very successful. Um, I think South Windsor, Granby, um, Windsor. West Hartford, Windsor, mm -hmm. um, a couple other towns. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I too went to the um, Laramie Project and I was in awe of the courage of both the cast and the director to perform this dramatic play. play. Um, and Jeff Rhodes wrote in the program, quote, I hope you enjoyed the performance despite the discomfort it will evoke and walk away considering what we can each do to continue making our community an even more loving place. And I thought, that was just the perfect quote for that program. Um, thank you all students and Jeff for that fabulous performance. Um, on Friday, November 16th, our high school students had the pleasure of hearing from a distinguished Weathersville High School alumni, John Elliott. John recently retired after 40 years from WTIC radio and he wanted to give back to his alma mater. He generously gave to Dollars for Scholars and to one of our teachers, Sue Coco, and her classes. And we have John's chair on display in the high school, the chair he sat in for all those years, and perhaps a motivator for some young person's future career in communication. <laughs> the event was coordinated by Corinne Nasida, a parent, and the board wants to thank Corinne and also a thank you for John for his time and generosity to our school. And finally, I attended the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving's Greater Together evening at the Learning Corridor on that snowy November 15th. The event was exciting and most informative. They have a new president, his name is Jay Williams, and he talked of their new strategic plan for working with all 29 towns of Greater Hartford. Jay and their board are creating a new strategic plan utilizing what they heard on their listening tour. And those of you who went, Weathersfield had their listening tour at the Web Barn during the summer. So as a finale, this was an unbelievable evening and then they had this finale, the foundation gave each of the 29 towns $100,000 to use as each town wants as we continue to make a community for all of us. It was quite an event. 
Um, more information will follow after the new year to the town of Wethersfield and the other 28 towns. So it really was quite an exciting evening. Um, not going to forget you, Eden. <laughs> Life at the high school. Well, thank you. First off, I apologize for being late. On my way here, we hit the last step on the um, like the little sidewalk by my house, and so we had to fix it real quick. Well, you know. <laughs> I was not driving. I was not driving. You, I'm not that good of a driver. But anyway, so first off, um, the powder puff game was supposed to be last night, but was unfortunately postponed until the spring. Probably good because I can't play football. <laughs> it was not good last year. Um, also, homecoming is Friday, December 7th from 7 to 10 in the WHS CAF. I'm very excited for that. Um, in the core layers, um, I'm really excited for this. Tomorrow, directed by Scott Rio, we are going to be filmed at WFSB. This is always a really fun trip. We'll sing like Angels We've Heard on High and a number of other songs. This is always a fun trip for us, and I will update you on when our segments will air. And right now, seniors are just really frazzled because on Saturday, um, we are expecting early decision and early action college application deadlines. So we're kind of freaked out, but we're pulling through, and that's what matters. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Good luck on that. We need it. FAFSA is a nightmare. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Anyone with any questions for Eden? Okay, thank you. So if there's no more comments. May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming and for watching. Good night. Just in time for Rudolph. Just in time for Rudolph. Oh, my goodness. Eight o'clock. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs>